Let's turn the page to the Browns because something uh, happened yesterday after their OTAs, which, by the way, just on the Deshaun Watson as a quarterback discussion, I don't know if he impressed you as much as he impressed me. I wasn't there. I saw a lot of tape. My goodness, that's what the quarterback position is supposed to look like. I was there. Wow. The ball comes out of his hand different than it did with six. I it don't know is why a, everybody seems shocked by this. Didn't we already no, know he was great? But to Not see shocked, it. Not but you see it and you know what you have. Right. You know, Jim, Donovan, Jim Donovan was telling me yesterday yeah. that it's kind of like you know you've got the present you asked for under the Christmas tree, and it's going to yeah. be even greater than you expected, but you're just not sure you're going to be opening it on Christmas and, Day. And, and this is the exact reason why there's some percentage of fans of this town that are so obsessed with Baker. Because for 30 years, we've seen absolute trash quarterbacks. So when you got mediocrity in Baker, you thought it was better than it was because you'd only seen awful. And now you see something that's actually great yeah, and you're but, blown away by like, it. I think the, I, I know what we're getting into Sean yeah. Watson. What surprised me most is this dude's been in mothballs yeah. for over a year. Yeah. And he came out and just even before I saw him throw a football and you just look at him, you're like, okay, that's what a quarterback looks like if you can build one in the lab. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you watch to your point on the, the ball comes out different. It's crisp. It's sharp. It's on point. He made throws yesterday and I know it's OTAs. I'm not right. going to gas that. Right. right. But. I've seen quarterbacks come into OTAs with a lot of rust on their arm. This guy had none of it. Wait till the pads get on. You see, we see yeah, people hype me happy now. Wait till them pads get to hitting. Wait till he start moving around. I think it's going to look even better. Then. Climbing up the pocket, improvising, putting balls on the money, 35 down, 35 yards on a on a on a laser. People gonna be like, you know what? This is it. Yeah. I can tell you, Garrett, with 100% certainty. When I, I did a really big story on Deshaun when he when the trade first went down of like how the Browns put this together and how they got him, the Browns are salivating over his RPO, and and his his ability to What's the keep plays run, the run pass, pass, run pass option. option. Thank you, appreciate it, guys. <laughs> Thank you. It opens and, up everything. Yes. And, and Kevin Stefanski sat down with an iPad with Deshaun for 45 minutes and went over and showed him, here's what you here's what we did. And now here's what you did in Houston, and this is how it's going to fit with what we're doing here. And that really, I think, had a lot to do with, I know everyone's going to say $230 million when I'm over, but I think that 45 minutes that Kevin and Deshaun spent chopping it up and talking yeah. X's and O's went a long way. The in, 230 in million didn't hurt. Oh, of course. <laughs> that, that but the fact that he's kind of vibing with his new And when you get architect. Deshaun on that board, if you want to see Deshaun Watson dissect some stuff, high level. I mean, from figuring out what the safeties is doing, guys is coming down, what coverage, what they roll into. Incredible. He's brilliant on the board. It was one OTA practice. I but, know. But yeah. you saw, if you were Super there, Bowl. you saw <laughs> why they're willing to go through this toxic mess that they're in right now. Yeah. You saw why they right. feel like the payoff is worth and it. And I think, once they to your point, it. wait till pads. My, my thing is, wait until close and late games when right. you need him to step up and be that guy. Um, yeah. I think he's, and you're going to have faith that he's going to do it. Yeah, unlike I, yeah. quarterback. Okay. Um, so his play was fantastic, but he did something after OTAs were over and the media session was going on. As many of you guys know, he wore number four in Houston. He wanted to wear number four here. The problem with that was that number was occupied. Walker had wore four last year on the defense, which is a little odd for a defensive player, but it is what it is. So Deshaun asked him, could he have the number? And Walker said, yeah, you can have it, and I don't want anything. Well, Watson wasn't going to settle for that. This is Walker at the podium yesterday, and Deshaun coming up to him with a little memento, a way of showing thanks for giving him the number four. Roll it, Mikey. You know, you go into a new system last year, you kind of, you know, try to take it in as a rookie, um, learning a new system, being around new guys, uh, the locker room and everything like that. So obviously going into that second year, with a lot of the same faces and a lot of, you know. Appreciate you, Appreciate you man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, All right. You're not going to open it? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Um, it's a good guy, man. Appreciate that. <laughs> so anybody that knows anything about watches knows that when you see that brown box, that's, that's, that's the cost of a car. That's mm -hmm. a Rolex. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah. On the surface, everybody was like, wow, what a nice guy. What a great guy. But then there were the cynics that said, hmm, 
interesting he didn't just hand it to him in the locker room where no one was That's, around. That was go. me going. Yeah, I, and it was me too. Um, it was for the camera. Serious? And I just he's on a campaign sure. right now. He's, he's with them all week. He picked the thirty seconds yes. he's in front of the cameras to hand. I don't it think Anthony Walker knew that was coming. I don't think Walker was involved in it. No, no, that was his PR team knew it was coming at that right time. Shout out to shout out to his PR team. Yes. You guys need to know how to be politicians more. Mm-hmm. The the optics count. Yeah, but he, we see through the optics. No, 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 no. no. Not he's, everybody. Yeah, we're, not, we're smarter than We don't people. care about that. <laughs> we don't care about that. His teammates, right? He's he's peaching to a specific audience. Let me show you how I take care of my people. It's, it's guesswork. I'm going to show you how I get down. I'm going to show you how I take my people around. This is how I roll. You mm-hmm. with the big homie now. Come on over here. Let me show you. I know, how but I just that. feel there's a measure of him doing hey. it for the credit. And well, now, so by the way, very transparent. And it works. And sp- it worked. We just showed <laughs> it. And, 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 and it works. Works. Talking about. By the way, Deshaun Watson should, should have spoken to the media this week. Totally agree. Yeah, I thought that was a miss yesterday. I totally agree. Because the questions are still going to be there next week. Yeah, they're not going to go away. And and, and I'll tell you what, like, I think that the Cleveland media, I was at Deshaun's opening press conference. I thought they did a fantastic job. They asked everything that needed asked. Yes. All he has to do is say, guys, we covered this. I said everything I can say on it. Yep. We're moving on and playing football. That's mm-hmm. all he has to. And, and there will be some reporters that don't hear that and they'll ask a follow-up. Oh, of course, but and I'd be one of them. Because you still have to, to ask say, the guys, I've, I've, I've said you, you're going to say that seven or eight times, and then everybody's going to get the idea that if we want any access to them at all, because you know how this game works, right? If you're going to keep asking the question that I'm refusing to answer, I'm going to refuse to and answer that's why any other gotta, question. So, so, and that's why he's got to keep doing press conferences because we got to get past that point, and then it'll be football questions. Right. And then you know, I agree with I, that. I'm yeah. the non-journalist guy. I don't. So even if he answered those questions at the press conference, as a journalist, right? Do you still have an yes. obligation to we have continue new information. to ask those new questions? Yes. Right? As information comes out. Yeah, yes. and, 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 and it was the day after the, 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 day after after the real the HBO, sports. Yes. So okay. there was no way that the, if he would have stood in front of Mike's, there's no way the first 10 questions wouldn't have been about anything but right. the HBO real sports series. Okay. But and get the that out of the way. Get it out of the way. Just but do that. Here's, right. here's what I always say, and I, this is what I wrote when Kyrie went on his media blackout. If you don't talk, we talk for you. Yeah, so don't you never let us that. don't let us do the talking for you. Yeah. Get out there and talk. And going back to LeBron, that's the one thing he did so well was media. He was always always available. Yes. And Deshaun needs to do that. He needs to talk and talk a lot and right. t- let him t- let him talk for himself. And then when he's off the field, shut up. Shut right, up yeah. and go Which sit in the Baker corner and stay out of the headlines. So it wasn't to your, just to a his rollout, point, though, to your point. Deshaun has proclaimed his innocence the entire time. Mm-hmm. 100% if, if you're truly 100% innocent, then why would you hide? From, I'm not saying he was necessarily hiding. Maybe the team didn't want him to do a press conference. But if I'm 100% innocent, I'm never going to shy away from talking. Because I'm even gonna, if you're 100% innocent, it might not be in your legal best interest to speak up. That's on it this. right there. Because the more he facts. talks about this, the more he opens himself up to cross-examination in these civil trials where his story might change. But that's why you just say we already addressed this on movie. Yeah, exactly. Then you that's can't the get answer. tripped up. That's because the anything he says in any press conference can be used against him right. in any civil suit. And, but then he'll get to football questions eventually if he does that, but be out there and yeah, talk. Just, or, I don't see him getting or, those until this is settled in some way. Or, I just don't see him getting serious football questions right now. Or he can right just now. tell all of us to go jump in the lake. I'm not talking to you. Which can you do to me? It doesn't. But he's trying to uh, win Jason, us over you, in a PR. Well, he, he's winning his teammates over. Right. That's the thing. His teammates keep him the Insulated. Bahamas will do that. They mm-hmm. keep him he wants insulated. to win the public over to Hey, Jason. Well, um, yes, he does. That. He does. He wants people to root for He's him. building Everybody a playground out, out front right now. He's building a playground what out else? on the lakeside. I, I will, I will, real quick. They are going on the attack more than they have in the past. Rusty Hart and his defense team mm-hmm. have sat back. Well, that's because Busby is, right? Well, that's because of the HBO show, I think. Yeah. Just, well, this, that's just within the last few days, there's been a pivot in their strategy, and they're doing more media, and they're getting out in front of this. I think they should have been doing it long ago. And Rusty Harden said, we were never going to win the PR battle. I was focused on the criminal component and then the NFL, and then we'll get to the PR battle. But I think that I, th- and listen, Rusty Harden's done this a lot more than I have. I think it was a mistake and they should have been on the attack earlier on. Okay. Um, do you think that the Browns were involved in the decision? Because I kind of do. I think there was a conversation between the Browns and Deshaun to not talk. Oh, for sure. That wasn't yeah. just Deshaun. Oh, 100%. That so was the Browns I, I, saying, you're not talking yeah, to Yeah, and probably Rusty Harden probably waited and, on that, and, too. And guess what? Next Wednesday, there's media availability and the, and the following and Wednesday. He's got to talk at some point. He yes. will at some point. I think, it, I think it, he, it behooves him to wait later. I know you want him to get it out of the way. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would if I were him. I think it's so close to the heels of the HBO stuff. Let it dissipate. That just let it simmer. When you come back for training camp, do what you said at the very beginning yep. and what you what you said. 
I've talked about this. I've gone over this. I am here to play football. I'm letting my lawyers handle all the legal stuff. I believe that I'll be cleared because I'm innocent and I am going to play football for the Cleveland Browns. And that's my priority. And he can hide behind ongoing litigation because it's true. He can't talk Mm -hmm. about it. Right. Right. Even if it's civil and not criminal. The reporters do want to ask football questions. Yes. The first first four or five questions to Kevin yesterday were football related. Mm -hmm. And then the Deshaun stuff. Were you surprised that Busby made two of the accusers available to the media? I know now that you said that Harden's pivoted and and you're going to see now this is going to be a fountain of stuff that's just flowing from both camps because I think all gloves are off at this point. Yeah. I was somewhat surprised that we heard from the accusers because just as Watson can have anything that he says in these interviews used against Mm -hmm. him, I believe the accusers can too. And even if you're telling a true story, I'm sure this has happened to all of you guys, you may change a detail here or there, not even knowing it, but the skeleton of the story is true. I thought these women opened themselves up to cross-examination in the civil suits that if they slip up and tell one small detail differently, Deshaun's lawyer is going to jump on that and say, wait a minute, now you're telling a different story. Your credibility is in question here. Was, I was surprised they talked. It's a catch-22, though. You need to put a face with it, right? you got to mm-hmm. put a face with the, with the allegation. you got to be people. So you need that. But at right. the same time, when you put somebody in your face and you put them in, in a public eye, there's a chance that they do change their story inadvertently or slip up. So it's a catch-22. You have to re- risk-reward. Like, hey, is it worth that person being the face of it? Or do we just well, let it yours, chill? Your, but your scenario is in the court of public opinion. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Where that, that doesn't matter, really. At the end of the day. Here's why I think he did it. He's looking for a settlement. And you're cranking up the pressure. Because I, I believe, I still believe all these cases will be settled. I don't think, I I don't think they're I, going to I, I think so, too. There's 22 of them. Yeah. This will take years. It would. The, take Browns, years. the Browns for sure want them to settle. They can't say that. The Browns want them to settle. Yep. Is there a scenario, Jason, where we talked about this on the show yesterday, where he could come out and say, I want to start by saying I maintain my innocence. I knowingly did nothing that, in my mind, crossed a line. It's clear to me now after seeing some of my accusers tell their stories that they were clearly offended by things that I may have done to them that I didn't mean to be offensive. And for that, I'm right. truly sorry, but I maintain I did nothing that was that crossed my line. If it crossed their line, yeah. I'm sorry for that. I want to take care of them financially. He can do that. Mm-hmm. I right. want this over with so I can put all of my energies into playing football. Isn't that kind of a I think the tricky thing about that, though, is that he did, if, uh, uh, if everyone's telling the truth, ejaculate on someone. And that is maybe like, you can't be like, what, that's not cool? How was I supposed to know? Is, that's is kind of rough. That's it, a rough thing, though. Yes, but isn't it possible that, that he, he perceived he the situation that she was okay with that. Oh, he thought you were, yeah. Maybe well, she wasn't, but didn't guys, say let's it face explicitly. It. I, you know, Athletes it's are tricky almost things. never told no yeah. in life. The ones that are true superstars. Right. Whether it's in high school, yeah, this C can become a B, so you're eligible. Mm-hmm. Whether it's in college, sure, you went to every class. We play Notre Dame this weekend. Yeah. You know, so they're used to, in life, getting the benefit of the doubt in every scenario they're in. Doesn't and matter in a court very, of law. I know it doesn't, but I'm just saying in his mind, yes, in the minds is, of these athletes, and I know you've mind. had many conversations with many, as have I, yeah. where they're incredibly entitled. But I entitled agree. Entitled where they shouldn't be. They get offended anytime you push back on them at all. About of course anything. they do, because no one ever They've has. They've never been challenged. Yeah. I so, still agree that's his best approach, though, what you just said. I, I think it's kind of nonsense. I, but I, I think said that yesterday. I suggested he do that yesterday, and everybody was like, Saying I'm, this is crazy. As as I wasn't there. No, I, no, I, I, yeah, I think that's the only play at this point. I, I, I don't. I, listen, here's if he, he feels that way. If he, if he if, feels if that you, way. he's down, he's down the street now. That if he's going to do that, he could have did that weeks ago. Yeah, he's already into the season. They got the cases scheduled. I don't believe that you could come out right now at this point and be like, you know what? I didn't think it was that bad. What's it worth for him though for this to be over? Here's the thing. It, it's worth a lot for it to be over. Sure. But here, so there's there's. There's a scale and there's two things to weigh on it. Number one, I don't believe it's in his best interest to settle now because the NFL is just wrapping up its investigation. Yep. If you settle now, you're admitting guilt of some sort and they can use that in terms of their suspension. Not but if the in your other statement side, you say, I, I, I maintain it I doesn't matter. Wrong. If it they're doesn't paying them, it doesn't matter. If you settle, you, you, yes. you're perceived guilty. But the other side to that is the NFL wants him to settle too. So the NFL can go to Deshaun and say, listen, clean this up and get rid of this. And it's three games or two games or four games or whatever the number is. Yeah. If you take these to trial, 
all bets are off and the gloves are off and we'll see what happens. That's what I think is going to happen. And so, so that's why I don't think they and both. Listen, I talked to Rusty Harden, his defense attorney two days ago. I talked to Tony Busby, the attorney representing the 22 women yesterday. I love that you asked him, are you looking for a settlement? And both sides said that is not a discussion right now. Well, yeah, it's not a discussion right now because the NFL is wrapping up its investigation and they're getting ready to rule, right? So they're going to sit back and wait for the NFL and the NFL could very well go to him and say, Clean it up and get rid of it, and this is what it's going to be. If you don't, who knows what it's going to be. Do you think there's a chance they would suspend him, and then if he settles later, or if he loses later, give him another suspension? I I think it will be one suspension. Okay. Unless new information comes out from a new Like the Ray Rice situation. I know this is the most tough, it has to be the most difficult question that we're going to ask you today, and it's not fair to ask it, but I feel like we have to, um, because that's what we've done. At the end of the day, what do you feel the suspension is going to be? I believe, I've maintained this from from the start. According to the NFL's code of conduct and, and sexual misconduct, I believe it will be six games. And I and this is not source. This is just, I've tried. It's just your opinion. Yeah, just my opinion. I believe it'll be six games with the potential to be four or five on appeal. Okay. That's what I believe. That's what Ben Roethlisberger got. Ben got six. And I understand, you know, Ben didn't have 22 cases. Right. Now, Rusty said... He believes only, and I disagree with this, but Rusty said, he, in his mind, only three of the 22 fall under the NFL sexual misconduct policy. I believe all 22 do, because right. it's written so vaguely, mm-hmm. they can just do whatever they want. Right. But he believes only three of the 22 would even fall under that. Tell us the information that you've seen now yeah. that was previously not in the public view, and... Tell us everything you can about it. I don't know if you can tell us how you obtained it or, I mean, I think we could probably discern how you got it, but what do you have? How did, if at all, it change your view of this entire case? And please feel free to compromise your sources. (laughs) (laughs) I had been told basically since the trade went down that there are discrepancies between some of the testimonies given under oath and some of the allegations that are made. And so I've spent the better part of two months trying to get a hold of some of this court testimony. Well, I finally got it this week. I got some of the transcripts. Of the depositions. Of the depositions. And, and listen, I got, I think, as I said at the start of the show, three or four. There's 22. I got three or four. I haven't seen the other 18. So yeah. let's make yep. that perfectly clear. I don't know what's in the other 18. But from what I saw, one of the things that I saw, there was a, there was a counselor who was, uh, I, I don't, she was a therapist, but by using the word therapist, you then confuse it with massage therapist. Right. So she's a counselor slash therapist who was treating one of the massage therapists after the incident, and she diagnosed her with complex PTSD based on the incident with Deshaun. And on cross-examination from, it was not Rusty who, who, who depositioned her, it was one of his associates, but under cross from the defense attorney, by the end of the, by the, end of the deposition, she said, and I have the quote here, I strongly feel that she was not truthful, fully truthful in the sessions when I saw her. The counselor said this was under oath. Uh, and, and then also, it, it just goes on that she didn't realize that this, the, the massage therapist that she was treating had reached out to Deshaun and responded to his text 19 times after the incident, after the alleged incident. So in other words, she was saying, if you truly were suffering traumatic- Complex PTSD it, or trauma. You, why would you then reach out to your accuser? 19 or to times. Your, to, excuse me, respond to your to accuser. Him, respond to him in 19 different text messages. Now, yeah. are you able to say which of the accusers? Is, is this one of the two that we heard from, or you don't know? I, I, I know, but there are names, but okay. I, That's just understandable. for legal reasons, I'm not, I'm not giving names. It. And the, and the counselor testified, it certainly doesn't sound like trauma if she's able to talk to him and is willing to do another massage. Isn't that a bad job by her in her evaluation? It, well, but she can only go off of the information that's right. told to her from the massage there. And, and, and it's worth noting that when she first took the stand, she said, I always believe the victim every time. Like, I'm here to, I'm here to support my client, and I, and I believe the victim right. every time. But and in then this by particular the, case. Then by the end of the testimony, she said, yeah, I don't think she was being very truthful. So I asked Tony Busby about that yesterday when we had him on, on the show. I, I was filling in on 92.3, and I brought this up to him. And, and Tony was not very happy with that and said, like, and I, I, basically, it's a really long quote. I don't want to read the whole quote. But basically, he said he was aggravated that 
uh, Rusty Harden, the defense attorney, was upset when there was leaked documents earlier on, and now here these are getting leaked. And well, isn't that turnabout though? Well, it kind of is, but he said that this was taken out of context, and I and he said you're only seeing a snippet of it. And I have the entire testimony. I, it wasn't a snippet. Well, I, I read the entire Jason, testimony. Jason, what's confusing to me, and maybe this is too deep in the woods, but if this woman was her therapist, isn't that privileged conversation? No, nope. I don't think she was her therapist, or was she a court-appointed court therapist who was supposed well, to she was, give an evaluation? She was treating the, the therapist, but she didn't She didn't reveal any details of that would violate right. patient yeah. counselor did the, confidentiality did the, the alleged victim know this woman was going to testify when she spoke to her i think i don't i don't know i don't have the answer to it that. Would, why, if you knew the woman was going to why would you lie if you know this woman's going to testify that's kind of weird and well, there but, and there were other inconsistencies yeah. um with with some of the other cases wow. there was yeah. a, a woman who said that she was forced to perform oral sex on deshaun and uh and in her testimony, she said that his, he never put his hand on her head. He just sort of guided her. And the question was, well, how can he guide you if he's not touching, if he's not touching right. you? Yeah. So there was some confusion and over then, that. And then I think the word coerced. There's a difference in the word in coerced. In that example. Yeah, there's a difference in the word coerced. Coerced doesn't mean physical force. Co coerced doesn't mean force. They have very different meanings. And, sure. and Tony Busby's, when I asked him about it yesterday, Tony said, there's very different meaning between coerced and forced. We never alleged force. We alleged coercion. Yet the word force appears three times hmm. in her yeah. statement yeah. of the Jason, court. Jason, let me ask you this question. In your investigation or the documents you saw, was there anything about individuals asking for payment or money? No, there was not in what I reviewed. There, there's, I mean, there's reports out there that there, there was a woman earlier on who was seeking a settlement early on. But in, in the documents that I reviewed, there was no that I saw, I didn't see anything about, about a settlement. And I just want to be clear on that one. She said it was a gesture. It wasn't that he put his hand on her head. Right, right, right. It was more of a gesture. And yeah. listen, I think Tony said he had put his hand over her head, never touched her, never head, touched and her head and gestured. And, and gestured. And, yeah. yeah. And so, a woman could feel forced in for, theory for sure. without actually being for physically sure. Yeah. forced. Sure. And, and I don't want to come on yeah. here and make, and, and try and sound like I'm trying to discredit these women. I'm just trying to lay out for everyone. Listen, here's the testimony. Here were the allegations and here's the court testimony under oath. Yeah, it's yeah, also very important because I was listening to this yesterday. I think it's very important that we point this out. So, yeah, now we're playing the media game where I think Tony released some things and he made his clients available to HBO Real Sports. And I think now from his office, Rusty was like, if you want to play hardball, I'll play hardball. Then we, we, there's more leaks that follow. I think it's very important to point out that it was interesting to me that you saw the deposed, that you saw deposition testimony of three or four. Mm -hmm. Do we know how many women were deposed in total? I don't think they're done yet because one of them just occurred three days ago. One of them that I got just happened this week, okay. just a few days ago. So do you know? So it's still have, ongoing. The stuff that you've seen, is that all of the Trans, transcribed de depositions that have been done or have there been depositions that have been completed that you oh, for sure to you? yeah I'm sure that there and are see, depositions. That's, that's somewhat troubling to me totally agree yeah I'm not I don't have all of them right and I don't know what's in the ones and I don't you strategically have, got the ones you got because it helps sure Deshaun's absolutely side. and I'll mention one more thing as a somebody who has a minor in psychology from Kent State University, you're, you're qualified on this show. Then <laughs> um, I don't, and I know that you guys already know this, but the fact that she was in contact with uh, her ass uh, alleged assailant afterwards doesn't necessarily mean that it didn't happen. That's very common in trauma victims. Sure. You just because you maintain a relationship with somebody afterwards doesn't necessarily mean that it didn't happen. He, the person's not a bad person. How many bad relationships do you know that you wish your friends would have gotten out of, but they yeah. just couldn't get well, out of it? Well, I, I think they address that in the real sports uh, expose because the second accuser, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember her name, but the second one they introduced to us in the piece, she had made the point of saying because Soledad confronted her about, well, you were in contact with him after. Mm -hmm. And she said, yes, I was, but I was afraid of what he might do. Mm -hmm. He's a powerful guy. Right. He could kill my business in Houston if he wanted to. And they talked about, look, 
you're a professional and you have a reputation and I'm a professional and I have a reputation. Yeah, it was gross. And it was very that, mafia like. Yeah, if that truly happened, that is very, very slimy. It's intimidating. But I, for I sure. also think that I, I can see how a victim would, I'd say string along, but I think her words was um, like giving him the runaround or whatever she mm-hmm. said. Yeah, I, I, I was communicating with him, but I never saw him again. Right. And I could have, but I was just putting him off, I think is what she said. Yeah. Putting him off. I, I can easily see yeah. how a victim would do that to in, one of their abusers. In the end, guys, we're never going to get the whole story. Only no. Deshaun Watson and these women know what happened. It's I, As I said yesterday, it's entirely possible, at least in some of these cases, that the woman didn't want to do it. Deshaun didn't force her, but she maybe felt pressure to do it. And did it anyway. That's possible. Absolutely. And that, and and I know some people say, "Well, it can't be that either." He forced her, or she did it on. No. There is a gray area where he, she felt forced, and he didn't realize it. I'm not saying that happened. I'm not saying it happened in every case. I'm saying in some of these cases, it wouldn't shock me if that happened. Here's how I felt the entire time. I don't believe. Deshaun is blameless. He can stand up there and maintain his innocence all he wants. Yep. I don't believe he's blameless I, in I'm this. I'm with you. But I don't believe that he is what he has been portrayed to be in some circles. Right. Either. Yeah, I, I find it hard just based on the person that he is and the people that I know, that I've talked to, that know him well. I can't imagine that, and you don't know everybody, but I just, it, it, I, I find it very out of character from the things that I've heard that he would force himself on someone that he would physically or otherwise force himself. But to your point, I think you're right. I don't think he's without blame here. I think somewhere in the middle of these ugly accusations and a complete denial of doing anything wrong is where the truth lies. And how it plays out yeah. is anybody's guess. I, I really wanted to get you get your thoughts on what the suspension was because I think that's in range what, yeah. what everybody who has followed this sort of thing with the league for years has said is going to happen somewhere between four and eight. I can tell you the Browns, as it's been relayed to me, the Browns are cautiously optimistic that it's not going to be something that derails their season. Now, what are they basing that on? I, I don't know. Right. But I've heard that over and Does over. Does eight derail the season? Well, I, I don't think, think anything think, more than half derails the season. Yeah, I would yeah. agree. I think eight's right on and that. Eight now is, I don't think they're going to the playoffs uh, if he's suspended for eight games. I don't either. Jason, do you think that we're going to have word on this when? By the start of training camp. I That's think the hope, be, I think, for everybody. I, and the Browns are confident that they'll have resolution to this by the start of training camp. Let me just say this. Um, if, you, if any young people out there, you an athlete, listen, man. You got to understand. You're different. You're not a regular person. So when, when people say to you, oh, you're just a regular guy like the rest of us. No, 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 you're not. You have everything to lose. When you on social media and people get in your DM, huh. out of here. We're not messing. It, keep your circle close. Don't meet people on Instagram. Don't give people say, well, I want to feel like I'm still giving people a shot. I want to. No, 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 no. Listen, you, you open yourself up. You could be a target. You could be people can set you up. Not saying this happened in this situation where Deshaun Watson, where I agree with you at is the is the premise of listen, man, you put yourself in a horrible dis- situation when you could have been right at the team facility, anything you need on your and, body, and, and to be clear, get it at the team facility. He reached man. out to a lot of these women yes. on social media. Th- thank so you. in your scenario, yeah. mm-hmm. you're saying, All guys, be careful. be careful. In this case, he was quite he thirsty. Was soliciting. Quite, yeah, quite thirsty. Very thirsty. Stop, stop jumping in the DMs. Don't mm-hmm. be hey. There's and, no debate that he used bad judgment. Yeah. Yes, I think that's no very clear. That. But to your yeah. point, and Jason, you know this. When the rookies are drafted and they all come into the league, they go through a, a rookie symposium. Symposium, yep. And, gee, they bring they, – they, they role play. They bring in people from the outside that have run scams on NFL players. That's a great job somebody and has, And have ensnared <laughs> NFL players. Uh-huh. And what the, the whole idea is to make them aware of the pitfalls of the life you're about to step into. Because it's one thing to be a big-time player at Ohio State, but when now, now you're paid. Yeah. Now you have something that a lot of people want. And so they preach this at the symposium. The players hear this ad nauseum. But what you're asking young 21, 22-year-old kids idiots. to do is, so to, is to uncheck the box of one Who of the fringe an benefits when you're of fame. 20. And they're not quick to do that. Yeah. They, they, they understand that logically that makes perfect sense. But then when it comes to being practical and applying that and they go into the real world, they're like, wait, I've worked my whole life to have money and fame, 
and now you're telling me to leave the fame part of it on the side? Mm -hmm. they, they all hear it. So few of them follow that advice. The Jason, good news you're is, nodding your head. Oh, it's true. yeah. It's 100% true. <laughs> the yeah. good yeah. news, though, Cleveland, is Jacoby Brissett, perfect gentleman. <laughs> walks the lady up to her porch at the end of the day, says, good night, my lady, and then yeah. just walks back to the car. He's going to be fine. He's there for you.